let's go to the next presentation. Bernie Reiter is a German gentleman. Yep. He is an automation sponsored core committer and works on the developer experience of WordPress and Gutenberg. He is currently focused in block hooks API. And this is the subject of his presentation, everyone. So a warm welcome to Bernie. Hi, thank you. I would like to tell you today about this new API that's been in WordPress since version 6.4 that we call the Blockroots API. And before I get into the Blockroots API, which is a way to extend block themes, I would like to spend a quick moment talking about classic themes, specifically about this mechanism that we're all familiar with, or most of us are, called hooks and filters and which a lot of us have used to write a plugin for a classic theme in the past. Let's have a look what that could look like, for example. Um, we go to the plugins panel, we activate the plugin, and we go back to the front end. And we find that after we reload, um, a little piece of markup has been injected by the plugin. Um, and the way this is normally done is the plugin author writes a function, the so-called filter, which modifies the argument and returns the modified argument as a result. And then this filter function is plugged into a so-called hook, in this case, the, the content hook, to run that function whenever, in this case, the post content is rendered on the front end, which results in this little piece of markup, the like button, being appended to it. Now, so far is it good. Um, if you now think about what plugin development has looked like in recent years with the advent of block themes, you might notice it's a bit different. Uh, plugins that target block themes tend to include one block or any number of blocks that the user typically has to manually insert into the editor. For example, if you want to modify a template, you go to the inserter, insert your uh, block, uh, and save the template and only then will it appear on the front end. Now, what this is missing is a way for the block to appear right upon plugin activation, like we had in the earlier example with classic themes. And this is the problem that Blockhook solves. Um, let's have a quick look. Let's replace the 2021 theme, the classic theme that we were just looking at earlier, with 2024. And let's assume we're now developing a plugin that includes this like button block. Turns out we just need to add three lines of code to the block JSON to make this like button block appear the moment we activate the plugin. So we just add these three lines, and I'll get into the syntax in a moment, um, which basically just specifies the location where we would like to insert it. And now if we activate this plugin and go back to where we came from, we find that the like button is there right upon activation with no interaction in the editor. And we can even choose to inject it in multiple positions at once. Let's say we not only want it under the uh, post content, but also under uh, the comments. This change puts it right there. All right, let's have a closer look at the syntax. As I said, all that's needed is a little edit to the uh, block JSON file. There's this new property called block hooks, which itself is an object. And the key is what we call the anchor block. This is the reference point next to which we would like to have our block injected. And the value is the relative position. So the like button was inserted after the post content block. Other values that are uh, possible here include before, first child, or last child. This was what we just were using for the uh, comment template block. It is generally useful for container blocks that contain a number of blocks to append our block as the first or last block, respectively. Now, you might be aware of one key difference between classic themes and block themes, and that is block themes can be modified by the user, can be customized in the site editor. What will happen if we now look at this template that has now been changed, modified by the Blockroots API in the site editor? Let's find out. So we go to edit site, 
and have a look at the template here, and we find that actually the block was inserted. And now let's actually shake it up a bit and cause a bit of mayhem, move it around, and decide that actually we don't really want this other block here, we just delete it all together, and save this template, and go back to the front end, and go back to where we came from. And we find that one block has been moved, and the other one has been removed. So this was very important to us when we were implementing uh, the block root API, that while it could serve as a way for a plugin author to suggest a location where a block should be inserted in the front end right upon plugin activation, it should still be overridden by the user. The final say, the ultimate decision, rests with the user. Any changes the user makes in the site editor will be respected. I will briefly cover some advanced uh, examples, time permitting. Um, you might have noticed that so far we've basically unconditionally added the um, block to the block JSON file, and um, it was subsequently shown with, with, on, with, with no conditions. Um, you might sometimes want to impose a condition upon which a hooked block is rendered or not. And this is what we've introduced two filters for. There's the hooked block types filter, which is an array, um, which allows to filter an array of hooked block type names. Think of it as the list of hooked blocks that are injected at a given position that is specified once again by the relative position and anchor block type. So for example, in the previous example, this would contain, the array would contain the like button block that is inserted after the post content block. Those would be the other values for these arguments. And finally, the important part here is the context argument. And this is what allows you to make insertion conditionally depend on what the anchor block and subsequently the injected block are part of. So for example, if the anchor block is inside of a template or of a template part or of a pattern or of a navigation post uh, object, you can inspect that here in this filter and decide if you would like to add your block or not. And finally, the other thing you might have noticed, we were inserting the like button block with no custom attribute set. We were just using the default attributes. And while we generally encourage block authors to pick default values, to put a lot of thought into picking default values, that makes sense both when manually inserted into the editor, but also when automatically inserted by block hooks, we recognize that sometimes that doesn't quite cut it, and you would like to customize um, the attributes of your uh, block that you're injecting, and this is what this filter is for. I can't, keep this, uh, I can't cover this in much more depth, but I will briefly show an example of what it can do in practice. I'll be using the uh, copyright date block, which some of you might be familiar with from the learn.wordpress.org materials, um, and I've modified it a bit. So let's see what happens when we activate that block. I've modified it such that the copyright date block is injected after the site title block, but only when it's part of the footer template part, not in the header, you might have noticed. And I'll briefly show what code I used to do this. I've used the first filter that I was referring to to basically check are we inside of a template part block and are we after the site title, and only then am I inserting the copyright date block. And let's now briefly also use the other filter that I was uh, mentioning, the one that allows you to customize the attributes. Here we're setting a starting year and a matching Boolean to define not just the current year to be shown, but the date range next to the copyright symbol. And let's see what happens when we save that and reload the page. Ta-da! So this is just the, peak of the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, in 10 minutes, I can't go much deeper than that. I would like to refer you to this excellent uh, article in the developer blog. Um, it covers the examples I've touched upon in much more depth and so much more. 
It was written by the brilliant Nick Diego. Um, shout out to Nick uh, for writing that. I would also like to um, give a shout out to my collaborators working on block hooks for the past couple of months, Tom Cafferty and Chadra Shalkowski. My name is Bernie Ryder. I'm a core committer and one of the uh, block hooks API uh, authors. If you have any questions about block hooks, you can find me here at the WordCamp, or you can pin me on WordPress Slack. I'm at Bernie there. Not really on any other social networks. I'm Bernard Ryder on WordPress.org. Um, yeah, thank you very much for being here today. I'm really glad so many of you came. <laughs> And I hope you'll find it useful. <laughs> yeah. Come on. We have a present for you. Oh. For, Thank you so for much. being uh, such a great speaker for WordCamp Europe 2024. Thank you.